Welcome to the DLA Piper's video blog from the 17th COP in Durban, South Africa on the 6th of December. It's Tuesday of the second week here in Durban at the Climate Change Negotiations and Conference. And I would like to speak with you today about NAMAS. NAMAS is a term that was first introduced to the UNF2C process in 2007 as part of the Bali Action Plan where parties agreed to, and I read from the Bali Action Plan, uh, to implement nationally appropriate mitigation actions by developing countries or developing country parties in the context of sustainable development, supported and enabled by technology and financing and capacity building in a measurable, reportable and verifiable way. It was really a way to include and introduce some kind of actions on behalf of developing countries in the UNFCCC context. And this started quite a debate in understanding what this text means and where the opportunities are for developing countries to introduce their own actions and to contribute in the global fight against climate change. Uh, this debate is ongoing here in this process. At the moment, we're looking at various different topics with regards to NAMA. Key issues are how do you qualify and quantify and define a NAMA? So still, it is not absolutely clear to most of the countries and parties what a NAMA really means. And also, how do you register NAMA? So if you do, if you believe you're doing a NAMA and you introduce it, so how do you get credit for it in, in, in the way, in the world of uh, pledges and uh, climate change mitigation actions that need to be comparable between parties? Parties. And uh, this is at times has been very frustrating for a lot of parties that they have been trying to do things but not really realizing how they can do it and with very little guidance from the UNFCCC process. But it is also an opportunity. It is an opportunity for progressive countries with, that are seeking innovative solutions and that want to contribute with their own national and appropriate mitigation actions. So in the absence of any guidance from this process, there's quite a lot of freedom for host countries and investor countries to define together, maybe in a bilateral treaty, in a bilateral agreement, in a memorandum of understanding, what they would like to do together in order to take action in a host country, in a developing country, about climate change. And let me give you an example. We're advising a range of governments, but one in particular, where the fundamentals seem quite attractive to deploy in, uh, capital and invest with private money in uh, uh, renewable energy projects. And we're talking large scale. We're talking several hundred millions. And we've been looking, US dollars that is, and we've been looking at, with the country at how can we create a framework that would attract private sector investors in investing into those projects. And there's some general rules that you have to deal with and that you have, have to address if you want to really incentivize the private sector in the country. And uh, I think the, the most important one at this point in time is scale. Make it big, because only if it's big it is attractive enough for private in, uh, sector investors because the transaction costs are low compared to output. Um, use a single technology. Don't make it too complicated. Don't try to you know, change the entire country at once. Do it step by step. Uh, you, you must identify the barriers to your investment. So if you want to invest in renewable energy, please understand why doesn't it work at the moment? Why does the private sector doesn't invest in your country? Is it a political risk? Is it no access to financing? Is it the foreign exchange uh, risk that is involved in your transactions? Can you have a, a good counterparty that wants to offtake the power from your renewable, pro uh, renewable energy project? You must cooperate with government. Key is that you're actually working with the host government and the investor government together so that they understand that they have to put a framework in place, they have to put regulations in, in place that give comfort to the investor. And th uh, lastly, you have to understand the UNFCCC process and you do have to be innovative. You have to not be afraid to shape the future of NAMAS yourself by sitting down with the host country government and sitting down with the investor country government, defining the policies and, and then invite to the table the private sector so you can structure around the risks. But if you do all of this and you do this in a, in a coherent, transparent way, and then report this to this process, to the UNFCCC process, both the host country and the investor country should get credit for uh, the actions taken and at the same time you really find a way of involving the private sector in taking action against climate change. Um, 
uh, so we, we, uh, the, the, as I said earlier, the, the lack of guidance at for once in this process is not a bad thing. We're at an early stage of ident identifying and understanding what NAMAS are, and this is an opportunity for the people to understand the process well and have good opportunities within country to really make a difference. And uh, so with that, I think it's a, it's a, we, we gave you enough clear guidance today. If you have some of those ideas, please contact us. We're more than happy to help you. Um, and just one last thing, we're, uh, today is the 6th of December. I'm not sure if you know that, depends on where you live in uh, uh, Germany and most of continental Europe. Uh, it's Nikolaus Day or Santa Claus Day. It's the day where the kids are, the good kids are, have been afraid of this day and uh, have been looking forward to this day and the bad kids have been afraid of this day because the good kids get fruit and uh, candy and the bad kids get, uh, well, they get slapped and they get punished. And uh, so today I'll be going to COP for you. I'll be looking around who has been good and who has been bad. And I'll be uh, looking out for Santa Claus and see which countries will get their punishment today and which countries will get their food and candy. I'll report uh, from COP for, uh, with that tomorrow. And I hope you have a great Nikolaus Day. Thank you.